Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to introduce one of the latest functions introduced in the DAX language, which is rank. Was there the need for a new ranking function? We already had rank EQ and rank X. The thing is, rank EQ is derived from Excel and most people don't use it because of its limited functionalities. Rank X is extremely powerful, but it shows some complexities and most important, Rank X falls short if you need to produce the ranking based on multiple columns. So if you want to produce the ranking by brand, it works ranking of the brands by the sales amount, it works just fine. But if you want to produce the ranking based on the sales amount and then next on the brand, you can solve the problem, but you need to uh, create some DAX acrobatics uh, in order to solve the problem. We've shown uh, in uh, several articles in the past both how rank X works and how you can produce uh, ranking on multiple columns. But the important point is that uh, rank solves all of these problems in a much simpler way. It's a window function, it can sort multiple columns, it produces a nice and coherent result when it cannot produce the rank. So, it is, as of today, the best function to compute ranking. But let's look at the demos to get a better feeling of how it works. Here on the screen, my usual matrix that shows the sales amount sliced by brand. Now, for this demo, I'm not going to use the sales amount. Indeed, instead, I'm going to use the rounded sales measure. Rounded sales computes the nearest multiple of the sales amount to 400,000. The reason I'm using rounded sales is because I want ties in my report. Indeed, you see that if I sort it by rounded sales, I have several rows that have the very same value. These rows can be ranked with the same value or with different values. And when rank with rank, you have an easy option to obtain the result, whereas rank X falls short. Indeed, before introducing rank, Let's do a brief recap of rank X and why rank was needed. Let's say that I want to compute the ranking based on rounded sales of the different brands. I can do that quite easily, creating a new measure. Let's call it rank X and I use rank X. I need to provide the table that I use for the ranking, that is all selected product brand. And then the measure that I use, not sales amount, but rounded sales. Let's move it a bit down and then I can place rank X and uh, it works. It has no particular issues. It shows uh, five for all the rows that shows uh, 800,000 and then one, two, three, four, five, 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 eight, nine, nine, nine. So everything is working fine. The problem, the first problem is that uh, I might not want to see five, eight. The reason why it's showing 5, 8 is because I have three rows which are ranked 5, so the next one is ranked 8. If I want to show 5, 6, 7, then I need to use additional arguments of rank X. If I write a comma, the next argument is the third argument of rank X, the infamous third argument of rank X which is uh, a very powerful feature quite nobody uses. Indeed, whenever you see rank X being used, it is always with two commas. Then when you want to use the sending, and finally, I can specify dance. Uh, let's format it in a better way. We have all selected, rounded sales, the two argument, the sending, and then dance. By doing this, now you see that uh, the ranking shows uh, 5, 6, 7, 7, 7, so, which is, uh, that is uh, much better than before. Uh, the problem is the syntax is not really intuitive, so it is quite complex to remember all the different arguments, but that is not the most complex problem of rank X. What if uh, I don't want ties to be ranked the same way? So I don't want to see 5, 5, 5. I would rather see five, six, seven, because despite having the same value for rounded sales, I might want to add the second column for the sorting. For example, I might decide that I want rank X to rank first by the rounded sales, and in case the R ties, use as the second argument, Fabricam. 
Now, you can solve this, uh, but it requires some complex tax acrobatics. I'm not going to explain how to do that because we have a different article that explains this. Besides, there is a second problem of rank X. That is, uh, what happens if, you add, if I add another column? For example, I add the category before the brand, and you see that rank X shows one everywhere. If I then expand cell phones or home appliance or computers, the ranking works nicely. I can see one, one, two, three, three, four, but this value, one here, one here, and one at the grand total is definitely wrong. Yes, you can easily solve it using something like if is in scope uh, product brand, then compute the ranking, otherwise blank everything out. But you see that the code starts to be more intricate. Now, all the uh, subtotals are gone, the ranking works nicely, but you need to pay attention to these details uh, and it kind of become error prone. It's very easy to make mistakes. So we have two issues. The first one, we want subtotals to disappear automatically. And the second one, what if we want uh, two columns for the, for the ranking? One is uh, the uh, rounded sales and the other one is the product brand. Now, rank X falls short here, but I can use rank. Rank is a window function, so I'm not going to explain all the details of window functions because we have explained window functions in different articles. I just want to give you a feeling of how uh, rank works. If I want uh, rank, I can use the rank function. I need first, as the first argument, to say if I want it dance or skip. We want dance, and then we provide the table that we are going to use, all selected product brand. And then I need to provide the order by. So I want the ranking made by uh, sales amount. No. Again, rounded sales. And that's it. You see, the syntax is uh, easier. Dance, which is the, probably the first and most important argument, is the first. Then you provide the table used for the ranking. And finally, the order by close. You just hit Enter. Place rank, place it in the matrix. Uh, and it shows, uh, well, a different... Um, a different value because it shows 5, 4, 3, 3, 2 instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Indeed, when I produce, when I specify the order by, I need to say whether I want it ascending or descending. Rank X defaults to descending. Rank defaults to ascending. So we go for descending order. And now the two functions produce the same result, but rank is much simpler. Not only it is much simpler, if we get rid of the category, You see that we have the same result for now. That is, all the rows that have ties, they are ranked the same way. What if I want to provide five, six, seven, and use the brand name as the second sort order? Well, with rank, that is as simple as adding more columns to the order by. So I want to add the product brand, and I want this to be sorted ascending. So I can specify two columns. I hit enter. And now you see that the results now are different. The ranking based on rank X still produces 555. Five, five. The ranking based on rank uses 567 because it is using the brand as the second level of sorting. So rank is easier to use. You can produce the same result, but you don't have to spend too much time understanding all the intricate duck shenanigans that rank X exposes. Whenever you work with window functions, it was quite always a good idea to avoid the full syntax and use variables to pre-compute the values. So if I were to write this code, I would start with a variable that I typically call the source table, where I use add columns, a add columns to all selected product brand. And then we choose a column name like amount that computes the rounded sales. And then I use, let's go directly for return, 
run kex dance over the source table order by i can no longer use or i should no longer use this i should use amount descending product brand ascending the result is the same performance wise it is the same you gain two different things the first one is readability you have a clear understanding of the source table that is going to be used for the ranking and with readability comes the second important details you have a very clear picture of which columns will be used to compute the value for which you have uh, the ranking now this might not seem important in this very specific case but there are multiple scenarios where you need to pay attention to which columns are overridden and which are not by the context transition that happens automatically when rounded sales is called here if you use the source table now this is this makes it clear that uh, this is computing the rounded sales for the given brand so replacing the filter context on the brand but not touching any other column so what happens if I add the category, for example, here, if I add the category before the brand, now it shows a blank everywhere, but if I expand computer or cell phones, you see, it's easy to understand that the rank is local. It is not a global ranking because it's not overriding all the columns. And this is even more important in case you have hidden columns that participate to the filter context. Let's pretend, for example, that instead of ranking the category or ranking the brands, uh, let's get rid of everything from here. Uh, we leave just the rounded sales, uh, but I don't want the category and the brand. I want to rank the months. So I place the year on the rows. I place the month on the rows. And I see my values. Everything is working. May, June, July, August, September, October. Now I want to compute the ranking of the month against the same months in the current year. I have rank X so I can easily write it. I build a new measure. Let's call it rank on month. I build the source table, uh, a variable source table, where I use add columns to all, select, all selected date month and then i compute amount which is uh, the rounded sales and then i return rank over dance over the source table order by amount descending it works it's nice i just hit enter place it in my matrix and it's not cool at all it shows one everywhere instead of showing uh, the correct ranking why is that well the reason is uh, i'm missing the problem i'm missing the to override the filter context on the month number if i look at the month and i look at the sort by column month is sorted by month number because of that, the query that generates uh, this matrix uh, actually contains not only the year and the month, but also the month number. And if I look at my rank on month, uh, it's easy to see that I'm only overriding the filter context on the month, but I'm avoiding, I'm missing the month number. If I want it correctly, I need to write date month number so that both columns are overridden and now my ranking computes the correct number. And you see it shows one two two three four well let's expand 2018 that has values everywhere we see january and february with a hundred thousand are both one and then i see two 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 because all the other ones have four hundred thousand so using a variable makes it easier to understand exactly which part of the feature context you are overriding as always writing dax code in a readable way makes it easy to avoid simple mistakes so, as you have seen, rank is a simple function. It's part of the window function. It works by scanning and searching for the current row in a table that is pre-computed. The current row is defined by the row context and the filter context together, which makes window functions unique. If you are not familiar with window function, go and read articles about them because there are some details which are important about how the current row is being computed. 
specifically for rank X, being based on the current row, the blanks are introduced whenever the current row is not available, like it happens with subtotals. This makes the code easier to write and less error-prone. And whenever you write DAX code, try to use variables as much as you can, because using variables makes the code more readable, and some subtle problem that might appear, like avoiding to override the filter context on all the columns that are required, are easily spotted if you write code in a readable way. Enjoy DAX! Mm -hmm.